Welcome back, Shalligators. Today, we're gonna talk about slash shred. <sighs> Kim Kardashian, who you know I love. You know I love you, Kim. Because she's on the cover of Allure magazine, a beauty magazine, talking about her beauty routine and stuff. Great, cool. She's also lying. She's also using this as an opportunity to gaslight women and say that she has never had filler in her face. And she also said she doesn't have eyelash extension. That, and that, that's what did it for me. That's what did it for me. That's when I'm like, that's when Kim lost me. And you know what? I love Kim. I love the direction her life is heading in. I love that she's in love with that big dick lunatic. What's his name? Eh, I'm outside a bodega. I saw a rat fighting over a rotisserie chicken carcass with a hobo. Well, he was my friend. That was Donnie Marco. What's his name? Pete? Okay, anyway. I love the direction her life is heading in, but you know, I hate liars. I especially hate celebrities who lie about their plastic surgery. See also Bella Hadid. Remember when Bella Hadid is like, scan my face, darling. And we're like, what the fuck are you, what are you even talking about? With what? Like a TSA thing that you walk through? Okay. And then she did admit to getting things done. And she's like, oh, no, no, I've never had like a like a brow, you know, like the thread lift or anything like that. It's tape. It's the oldest trick in the book. I just tape my face. First of all, taping is not an old trick. People don't do that. I've been on a ton of red carpets. I've interviewed a million celebrities. I have never once seen someone tape their face. I've also been on a lot of photo shoots. Also never seen someone tape their face. And Bella would like... She has pictures looking like, like this, like a Disney villain on the red carpet with her hair pulled back. Where's the tape? Where would it be? Do I have tape right now? That's why I wore my hair up to demonstrate this. That's not why. I'm just super grubby today. I'm so sorry. Look, I'm wearing like a, a cropped Montana muscle tee. I just, I look like I just waved out of the 80s. Like I just slithered out of a Trans Am and into a mall in 1986. My name is Sheila. Anyway. We're gonna break down Kim's statements. I'm gonna tell you what I think she's actually had done and look, I don't know. But I do know a lot of the same doctors. Hmm. And I know what they've advised me to do. And I know how they said I would look after. And I know who they compared that look to. Kim. And I'm also gonna to cop to some stuff I've had done. I mean, I've told you guys everything already, you know, but. More than that, what are we gonna what are we gonna learn from this? What are we gonna learn from this? Because I asked you guys on Instagram, what's the topic here? And I got a bunch of I got a bunch of stuff. Mostly, you guys were like, "Why lie about this? Like, it's just so dumb and annoying. Like, when celebrities lie, oh, that's attractive. Oh, that's attractive." Okay, okay. We're gonna talk about how to be a good liar. Now, typically, I would save this for Evil Week. In fact, I'm pretty sure I have done this video for Evil Week, but it's cruel summer right? We can always use a little bit of a bonus. So I'm going to tell you some tips on how to lie effectively. And we're also just going to rant. Before we get into it, have you guys joined Alpha Academy? Okay. So Alpha Academy is this new series I'm launching with Moment House. It's a four week, four part digital live stream series of sex tutorials. And we're going to round the bases. Week one, kissing. Week two, hand jobs. Week three, blow jobs. Week four, sex. I have been doing, <laughs> almost said a lot of research. Well, I have, it's a slutty summer. But talking to like a ton of guys, getting their input about all this stuff. So, I mean, I have quite a bit of input already. Um, it's gonna be so fun. We're gonna talk for like an hour. I'm gonna answer your questions live. And once you buy tickets, you can add your question to the little chat on the uh, event page, like there's a little chat bot thing. And also join me for the after party, the pillow talk after party, where if you had questions come up during the broadcast that maybe I didn't get to, uh, this is like a super intimate after party. We're capping the tickets that I think maybe like 50. So get them now and then we can like chit chat back and forth and I can answer your questions like even more in real time and a bit more focus. So tickets are only 10 bucks per session. So go ahead and click down below. It's going to be so much fun. We premiere on July 21st at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Don't worry if you can't watch it live. You're going to have a week to watch it. The broadcast is going to live on the homepage before we move on to the next topic. So you got a week to learn that info about kissing. I'm going to tell you things like how to fix a bad kisser. Cause this is, I mean, we know, we know what we're doing, but what do you do? It's a two part, it's a two person event. 
You know, like, what do you do if you're like, I am trying to be a good kisser and you are fucking this up, dude. I can, I can help you. I can help you. Also, we still have a few spots open for Italy. I think we've got five spots left for our trip to Milan, Venice, and Lake Como next April. It's going to be so much fun. We're actually gearing up for our Shalligator trip to Mexico that's happening in about a month. We're all in the group chat together. And that's really the best part of these trips is just like getting to talk with everyone before and then... The Costa Rica trip was over a month ago and that group chat is still lit. It's like a hundred messages a day. We're all like just back and forth. So basically, if you want to be friends with me in real life, this is an excellent way to do it. I just can't even wait. I cannot wait. Okay, let's talk KK. And I'm so, I do, I am sorry I look so grubby lately. I'm just so busy. Like I'm launching some new things. Some new things are coming down the pipeline. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes. I'll tell you about it when it's time. I'll tell you about it when it's time. You know, I can't keep anything from you guys. But yeah, I'm sorry I look so grubby. Not sorry enough to do better, just sorry. So Kim, this foolishness, this takes me back. Do you remember the x-ray? Do you remember the x-ray? On an episode of Keeping Up With The Kardashians when it was like, everyone thinks I have, I have butt implants, that my butt is fake. So I'm gonna get an x-ray. And it's like, see, no implant. And I, as someone who works with, you know, celebrities, and I've always told you guys, the reason I do this channel, I mean, now I don't care as much about celebrities, but when I started it, like a big part of it was like, I wanted to like cut through the bullshit of the lies celebrities tell people. Like we as non-celebrities have this idea that celebs somehow are operating on this plane of moral superiority and they are not. That like they're better in bed, they're smarter, they're happier, they're more confident. They are fucking none of these things. They are none of these things. Picture the most neurotic, insecure girl that you know at any party, that's a celebrity. That's how they are. If you put a celebrity in a room with normal people, like normal alpha females who are like confident, whatever, the celebrity sticks out like a sore thumb because they are so insane, usually drugged out, like alcoholic. So th their ego is so inflamed and so bottomless. They need so much attention. They're the loudest person in the room. They're the weakest. My point is they do not have any leg up on the rest of us. They really don't. They might be prettier, but like through filters and makeup and blah, blah, blah. They might be thinner. They might have more money. But like inside and emotionally, do they have like life figured out? Fuck no. They are so far behind people like you and I who are constantly trying to make ourselves better. Now, not all celebrities, of course, but a lot of them. I mean, healthy people don't want to be famous. I want to be famous. Oh. Well, it takes one to know one. <laughs> it takes a thief to catch a thief, right? So this takes me back. This whole Kim thing takes me back to her great butt x-ray where it's like, I know that you don't have a butt implant. You have a fat transfer. You have lipo taken out of here, out of here, out of everywhere and injected into your butt. It's called a BBL, a Brazilian butt lift, fat transfers, whatever. So it's like, no, you don't have a foreign object in there, but your butt is also not natural. I mean, it's natural in that you're moving a natural substance into a different part of your body. Girl, it's not real. It's do you see what I mean? And I feel like the Kardashians use these like little loopholes to kind of like lie by omission. And I feel like that's what Kim is doing with this filler thing. So she said she has a little bit of Botox. We're going to come back to that in a second because this is part of how you lie better. She fucking blew it. She took it too far, but she's on the right track. She said she has a little bit of Botox. I forget where she pointed. And she's like, I've never done cheek filler and I've never touched my lips. I've never done lip filler. And the interviewer's like, Really? And she's like, never. And she's like, what about your lashes? Eyelash extensions? Eyelash extensions. She's like, nope, these are mine. And like I said, that's when she lost me. That's when she took the lie too far. Cause I'm like, I have eyelash extensions. Like every girl in college I know has lash extensions. Like, okay, it's, we're gonna talk about the lie part. And so we're gonna talk about, I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm just so, you know, I get so bajiggity about Kim. You know how I am. What I believe she has had, because her filtrium, is that how you say it, filtrium? It's this part right here. As you age, it drops. Because as we get older, like when we're kids, we have that like, that kind of, we look more buck toothy, because this area is shorter. And as we get older, it lengthens. Like all of time is pulling down on our jowls and our body. But Kim was definitely in a phase where she had like a long filtrium. 
So what you can do is called a lip lift. They cut right here and they like cut out a little area and then they sew that area up. So it lifts up. I, I thought about doing it. Like, I feel like I would rather do that than more filler. I mean, filler is like, like, bro, what is it? It's like plastic. It's plastic. It's not good. It's not good for you. It's, it's not. Um, yeah. So it's like, you kind of want something that maybe a little bit more natural, natural as Kim would say, Oh, that, I'm not unnatural. It's like, well, you're surgerized. So I think she had that. I think she also had something called a lip flip. I've had one of those. It's Botox under your lip. And it makes like this part of your lip flop down so that your lips look fuller. It only lasts for like six weeks and you cannot drink out of a straw. You're like, because uh. it's Botox under there. I mean, but it's like $45. It's super cheap. You have to get it done a lot, but like I said, it's cheap. So like you can, I mean, compared to lip injections, which can be 3000 for to get, I mean, that's what I was paying. Like it's a lot of money. So you're like 50. I'm gonna be here every fucking day. I don't care. So I would say she had those things done. I also think she's got filler. Here's the thing. Who cares what she's had done? Who cares? Who cares if she's got lash extensions and plastic in here and this and this and blah, 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 blah. Like, girl, just own it. Who cares? But look, the obvious answer is she cares. She cares. That's why she doesn't want to talk about it. I understand that. And you know, I am a body autonomy absolutist. Don't force me to take a vaccine. Don't force me to carry a baby, okay? Don't force me to get a haircut, wear a high-waisted jean, nothing. Get your fucking opinions off my body, get them off. So in that vein, I can understand why, I mean, if I don't wanna be told to do something about my body, I don't wanna be told to talk about my body in a certain way. I completely get that. But what I've always said, and I've said this about Bella Hadid, then don't speak on it at all. If you're gonna speak on it, tell the truth. If you don't wanna tell the truth, don't bring it up at all. Don't go on the cover of Allure magazine, a beauty magazine, that's probably gonna ask you, why are you so beautiful? Could it be you've had a little help at the end of a needle? You know, is that really something she didn't anticipate? Or if she did anticipate it, did she plan to lie about this? Or she is so powerful now, she could easily, I mean, I have, I used to have minor, nobody celebs. I mean, this is just part of the game. The publicist would be like, hey, don't ask them about X, Y, Z. And I'd be like, that was the only interesting thing about them, but okay, fine, right? She could easily be like, no plastic surgery talk. I'll talk about my beauty line. I'll talk about my facial routine, my hair care, whatever. There's plenty of stuff to ask Kim about that has nothing to do with injections. So the fact that she was willing to talk about it but as most people are deeming it, is lying. And who knows? Maybe she's not. Maybe she's not. I don't know. She's gorgeous and she looks great and she's thriving. She's in her 40s. She's fucking, the, she's getting dicked out. Like, whatever you're doing, d good for you. If it makes you happy, Kim, good for you. Like, I literally don't care. I don't care how much of your own fat or plastic fat that you inject in your body. Like, if you are feeling good about yourself, that is literally the only thing that matters. Love it. I don't like when celebrities make these wild transformations seem accidental. I was very transparent with you guys when I talked about how I lost weight. I did it through this drug called Ozempic. Like now, I don't know that it has the same efficacy. Like my, you, you kind of like just plateau. I'm still losing weight though. Like I'm gunning for 119, which would put me, I would be 45 pounds I would have lost. I don't know why I want 119, I just do. To be in the teens would be just like bananas. Um, I don't know where I'm going with this, but like, again, like I, you guys were like, well, how did you lose weight, blah, blah, blah. And I was very trepidatious. Like, okay, if I make this video, I either have to come up with a big lie and sell it forever, which is really exhausting and completely antithetical to what I do here on the channel. If I was gonna lie and be fake, bro, I work at a hedge fund. I work in corporate America. I have a 401k, be a lot less stressed. I'm like, no, if I'm gonna talk about it, I'm gonna tell the truth. I'm gonna keep it all the way 100, and I did. And the response was like, thank you. Thank you for telling us the truth. Like, hey, if you feel good, great. Very few people, very few, were like, you're doing it the wrong way. I do everything the wrong way. I live my entire life 
the wrong way. I get highlights. I've got extensions. I've had Botox since I was 22. Like the fuck is the right way? Why is the right way? Who cares? There's only right for you, wrong for someone else. Like there's only right and wrong for us. And the same with Kim. It's like, if you feel good getting injections, great. Don't gaslight women. Don't gaslight women. Don't gaslight women. I really don't like that because then you have these women, these young women who are like, wait a minute, my body isn't like magically changing. I'm not growing this enormous ass. I'm not, my lips aren't just plumping as I get older. Of course they don't. They recede, they get smaller as you get older, unless you gain a ton of weight. And even then, not really, not really the case. So it just pisses me off. What do you guys think about this? I mean, do you think she's telling the truth? Do you think she's telling the truth? I am more interested in like laser treatments. So much more interested in that. Like sun, sun damage, but they've got that Armenian skin, that like thick Middle Eastern skin. I'm like, a, I'm just the thinnest skinned white woman aging like a tuna sandwich left on a car radiator. That's how I'm, that's how it's going for me. So let's talk. Okay, one topic you guys had, and and I think that this is a really good one. What do you say when people are asking you what you've had done and you don't want to lie, but you also don't want to speak on it? That's a good point. That's a really good, that's a good question because I feel like we are living in the age of intrusiveness. I mean, certainly during COVID, people felt completely justified and entitled to know your VAC status if you've had it, if you're quarantining. And I have said from the fucking beginning, if this was a sexually transmitted disease, if COVID was a sexually transmitted disease and someone posted a picture on Instagram holding hand with their boyfriend, would the masses at large feel entitled to be like, oh, so you're just like hooking up with this guy? I mean, are you guys using condoms? Like, have you done anal? Has he put his fingers in your pussy? Like what, you know, like what, can you just like break it down? Like, what have you guys like done? And yet people would post a photo outside with no mask and that's, exactly the line of questioning. Oh, well, are you distancing? And did you have a vaccine? And did you wash your hands? And how did you ride in the car to get, it's like, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. It makes me crazy. And I, that's, I could see where this was headed during COVID. Cause I'm like, we are normalizing nosiness. We are normalizing none of your fucking business. And this is also coming up in the abortion debate. You know, I've been transparent. I've had an abortion and I feel like this is now something women are feeling obligated to share. I mean, I've shared it with you, but I don't want, I haven't gone into a ton of detail because I, well, I have in a Flays video, but like just, I don't know. We are allowed to decide what we want to show and what we want to conceal. We are, we are. Are we allowed to lie? This goes back to the Kim thing. It's like, now that I'm saying this, I'm like, well, of course we're entitled to lie about our own body if we don't feel like telling the truth. But in Kim's case, the circumstances are so bizarre. Like I said, she could have had a publicist say, don't ask about this. We usually in real life don't have a publicist like going to the Sigma Chi house and be like, hey guys, nobody asked Brittany about those new tits. Like we don't, we don't really have that luxury. So we're kind of on our own. And so yeah, like are we allowed to like lie? You're allowed to do whatever the fuck you want. I know, I know that I just spent a whole 15 minutes ranting about like, if you're going to speak on it, tell the truth. But I did say celebrities, celebrities, because they're, I mean, their influence is just so large. You know, of course we're influential to our friends, but our friends are in our peer group, you know? And so we're all kind of like on the same footing, we're kind of in the same place in life. I assume you're not friends with like 12 year olds, probably not. So being honest with your friends or lying to your friends, I don't think it's the same impact as if it's a celebrity doing it. I don't know. What do you guys think? Tell, I mean, tell me, do you think like, no, if you got to walk it, like you talk it, if you want the celebs to do this, you got to like be the same way. I get that. What do you do if someone's like pestering you? Did you have your lips done? First of all, I think people ask, I mean, there's certainly a sector of people who ask in a bitchy ass way. And if you think that's what they're doing, you of course don't owe that kind of person a response. You of, like, of course you don't. And you can get real bitchy with it. Be like, oh, I'll tell you as soon as I can see your pap smear results, Caitlin. She'd be like, what? Be like, I mean, we're, since we're demanding information about everyone's bodies, 
What's going on down below? Did you get that HPV cleared? What's going on? Hmm? You could take that really bitchy route. You could lie. I'm like, no, <laughs> no. You could tell the truth. I mean, I'm always just like very honest with things because I don't want to make people feel bad and I don't want someone to go home and look in the mirror and be like, Shallon's getting like so much thinner every time I see her and she says it's positivity. And I feel like I'm real positive and I'm not getting thinner. So it's like, I don't, I just, I don't like to do that. But let's move on because I really don't have an answer for you. I'm so, I'm so sorry. How do you become a better liar? The truth is for idiots. By and large, the truth is for idiots. And I know, I know. I just spent this whole video saying, hey, if you're gonna talk about something, be honest. Okay, but now we're shifting into a baby evil week, aren't we? Okay. The truth isn't, okay. The truth is not necessarily for idiots, but the truth is a weapon and a weak spot, as all weapons are. Never, we learned this in Army ROTC, never carry a weapon that can be turned against you. So if you've got a gun, you got to know how to use that thing, how to hold it, be strong enough to hold it so that that enemy is not going to get that gun away from you. That's why people say don't carry knives because they're pretty easy to disarm. Like you grab a girl by the wrist, guess what? That knife is falling to the ground and I've got tiny little wrists. So the truth is the same way. The truth can be your greatest weapon or it can be your greatest weak spot. Case in point. Do you guys like how I look in this dress? What is the truthful response? You actually look really fat, like back fat, fat, yeah. That's not smart. You're hanging out with a fuck boy. Hey, what's up? I just really am in love with you. I just really feel like if you gave us a chance, we could be together. Is that smart either? No. Those situations turn you into a target. It's not wise. So how do we deal with the truth and temper it with the right amount of truth and the right amount of lies? Okay, well, you have to like decide what your point is, what your goal is. Like say it's this kind of situation where you need to lie about Sorry, guy just sent me a dick pic. It was a nice one. I should I wish I could share it. Oh, those Canadians. Um, okay, back we go. <laughs> what was I talking about? Um, lying. Okay, okay. So look, the truth should be used sparingly. Think of the truth as like not the main course, right? Not like the meat, the filet mignon. No, 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 that's not the truth. That's not the bulk of what you're eating. The truth is the sprinkling. It's just a little bit of salt, just a little bit, of, but, 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 just a little seasoning where you see fit when something needs it. That is how you use the truth, okay? In Kim's case, or in a case like this, when someone wants you to fess up to something, here is the trick. Fess up to something small to give the illusion that you are being truthful while continuing the lie. And you have to hold out fessing up to that little thing to make it seem like more of an admission, okay? We see this in movies. You're watching Law & Order, right? A bodega worker gets, gets robbed and then they find him dead later. And they're like, yo, Gary, we know it was you, man. And he's like, it wasn't me. No, it wasn't me, man. You can't pin this on me. He's like, Gary, it was you. You did this. We know you robbed him and then you came back and you shot him. That's what you did. No, man. All right. All right, all right, look, look. I robbed him, okay? I swiped some Slim Jims too. Maybe a Nutter Butter packet, you know, the little ones? Yeah, they're really good. But hey, I hated him and I robbed him, but I didn't kill him. And the detectives look at each other and they're like, all right. Because the assumption is, if they're gonna confess to something, why not tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? People want to unburden themselves. Not sociopaths, not psychopaths. They literally don't fucking care. They don't want to unburden themselves. So this is how criminals operate. They will confess to something small. Hey, I hated her and I took the wallet off that body, but I didn't fucking kill him, right? And they do sell it well because even if there is a semblance of conscience under there and they do want to confess, they feel good confessing a little and they kind of ride that confession wave and then they just add on the lie to the end. Yeah, I took the wallet off the body, but I didn't kill him. And it sells so much better. Even 
your mind, like there's less cognitive dissonance, sorry, the cognitive dissonance, that neural load decreases. So you truly do sell a lie better. So how did Kim do this? Okay, so she did one thing right, but literally everything else wrong. And this is assuming she is lying. Okay. She said she fessed up to the Botox. Yeah, I've had Botox like here and here, but no, no filler, no filler in my cheeks, no filler in my lips, no eyelash extensions. So she started out correctly from the psychopath book of how to lie. She fessed up to something tiny to give the illusion of transparency and then whoop, added on those lies, right? While you have someone believing that you're being truthful is the best time to lie. But she messed it up. She really bungled this because she took it too far. Well, she started too small and then she took it too far, okay? You want to do it the opposite. What do I mean by this? She confessed to Botox. To me, confessing to Botox is like confessing to dyeing your hair. It's like once upon a time that might've been like, oh, that's so extreme. Now it's like, I don't know, it's not a big deal. I've been getting Botox since I was 22. Die mad about it, who cares? So to me, it, it didn't get this bang for the buck. It didn't give her that big wave of transparency that she would need in order to sell the rest of the lies, right? She should have been like, my boobs are fake, but I haven't had filler. People would be like, whoa, the boobs are fake? Okay. I mean, they're, they look great. Again, do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. What she should have done is confess to something bigger and then limit the lies. Like, don't get greedy, but she did. So she started too small and she, she pork barreled on too many lies, which was, I've never had filler in my cheeks, which I do kind of believe. She's never really been cheeky, you know? I actually think she might've had her buckle fat pads removed. Like they're down here. I'm gonna give you that kind of look. It's, it's, I wouldn't recommend it though, because then you can look really like drawn and hollow and gaunt as you get older. Like those, that fat's going to dissipate, like ride the wave of a little baby face while you got it. Don't be mad about that. And then she added on the filler in the lips, which we have seen Kim's lips look a million different ways. Okay. And then, like I said, where she lost me was the lash extensions. She got cocky and she got greedy and she added on a lie that, again, to me, that's like dyeing your hair, lash extensions, literally, who cares? To me, that showed hubris. That showed ego, arrogance, and greed. She got greedy. And that, I think, is when people are like, girl, bye. You can't, you can't even cop to lash extensions. You, you seem so insecure. You seem like a complete liar and a gaslighter. That is what the popular opinion, I mean, that's what the backlash is saying. It's like, okay. Like, it's like claiming you don't have acrylic nails if you do. Like, what? Or you don't get a spray tan. It's like, there's so many things that women do. So Kim kind of bungled this. And again, if we go back to the truth that she either knew what these questions were ahead of time, and celebrities almost always they demand what are the interview questions ahead of time. They do. So she knew that this was going to come up or she could have just been like, I don't want to answer that. They would have cut it. They would have cut that footage. Like she has the power here. She could have done that. She knew they were going to ask this. She had time in advance to prepare a lie time in advance to, to practice it in front of the mirror. And she still blew it this hard. Good luck being a lawyer. You have to do a lot of bluffing in that profession. It's just very strange to me. The whole thing is strange. It's superfluous and unnecessary to go on a magazine and lie about the procedures you've had done. I mean, I just think that's very odd. I just think, right? Doesn't this seem just unnecessary? Huh. But you know what? This family lies. This family lies. Kylie gaslit us forever about, oh, I don't have, it's just lip liner. Okay. Uh, Bruce is the biggest example. We had a whole wall. We had at Star Magazine, it was called the I Told You So wall. And it was covers blown up huge of things we were right about from drug addictions to Bruce Jenner's cross dressing. Like that's what they called it back then. And he was always like, ah, we're going to sue. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, are you Caitlin? Okay. Hayden Panettiere recently did the cover of People. I was at rock bottom and addicted to pills. No shit. I wrote that article a million times. We, I know that. She would always threaten to sue. Her bitch ass publicist would call screaming at me. I'm like, she's lying though. 
she's lying. And I, I even said, one day she's gonna come out in a magazine and she's so brave. Ugh. You're not brave, you're a liar. And you've spent years lying and gaslighting and now you wanna parade? Get the fuck out of here. I don't, I mean, it's better late than never that you come clean, but like after you've been terrorizing people and pretending people aren't seeing what they're seeing, I don't know. I don't know, man. And it just really bothers me when celebrities do that because it really does have an impact on people, you know, especially in the beauty category. It really, really does. Like we're all fully formed women here. Like we're wonderful, bad bitch, alpha females, you know, and we're not as easily swayed by what celebrities are doing. A lot of girls are. And even we are too, to a degree, you know, I've said a bunch of times, like the Kardashians are so inspirational for me in a lot of ways because they're a million miles down the road in the same career. And they've helped me feel better about things that I've gone through. And that's why we look up to celebrities is like, they seem relatable, but when they like, when they deviate and they gaslight us, ironically, they think they're protecting their reputation, their brand, they're actually only hurting it. Transparency, if you even want to speak about it, is always better than lying to people because people, the masses, collectively, the wisdom of the crowd, we're pretty good lie detectors. We are. At least we are here in the Chalantourage. So listen, next time you're dealing with someone and you're asking them to tell you the truth, a guy's like, I mean, we went out for drinks, but I didn't fuck her in the back of my F-350. Hmm. Maybe he's telling the truth. Maybe you need to uh, get a black light out in the back of that truck. Look for bodily fluids, you know what I'm saying? I wanna know your thoughts on this. If you're a good liar, tell me how. And like I said, join me for Alpha Academy, the sexy sessions. It's gonna be so much fun. I'm so excited. And it's all gonna be very like PG-13. There's not gonna be like dicks swinging around. like. We'll get a little spicer as it goes on, but it's going to be so fun. Tickets are only 10 bucks. Would you not pay 10 bucks to fix a bad kisser and have a better sexual experience? Get better at blowjobs, get better in bed and be like that bitch that a guy will never forget for $10. I'll show you how. Oh, and one thing, if you want to buy tickets to all the sessions, it's annoying, but you have to, they're individual transactions. You have to like buy the kissing one and then go back and then buy. Don't ask me why. This isn't my platform. I didn't make it. It's annoying, um, but it's... I know, technology, men, right? But we're gonna have a great time. And like I said, join me in Italy. We're also gonna have a fantastic time there. I will see you later, Shalligators. <laughs>